So there's just a couple of common problems on the deadlift in terms of what it makes uh, full range of motion or what counts as a rep. But uh, this is just a generalization, but this is uh, for the most part, for most people in our body comp position based clients age 50 or so. But uh, if anyone shows any uh, inability to hold his tight postural position or deadlift safely, this is something to consider. So a touch and go deadlift from the ground up versus restarting at the ground each time versus completely missing the ground. So first, ideally what would work for these guys is a light touch and go. So symmetrically hitting the weight on both sides, light tapping up, but you're never unloading the weight to the ground. As soon as you unload that weight to the ground, that's when you have to risk losing the back position, the hips shooting up and putting the pressure in the wrong position on the spine and body. So, um, so we want a light touch and go first. Show me that one. The regular deadlift stance there. Coming up off the ground, so tight. Lock it in, light tapping up. Or light tap, right up to one. Even light, light tap. Two, drive through heels. Two, one more. Light tap. Then three, slow squat. Good, good, good. And done. Okay, that's it. Plenty. We're going to take it down. Next, we're going to uh, restart each time. You can see he's got great positions and actually keeps his hips nice and low, which allows for a better position off the ground in this case. But most people are not good about getting a nice, uh, attractive, extended position. So they're going to open up. It works some more since they get tired and his focus uh, leaves them. And they're going to start to open up and pull more and more the core back position. So show me a restart each time. So you basically restart each time. So, so pick it up. Pick it down. Completely take the weight out. And then again. And out. Then again. Now, no problems with someone like this. He shows good mastery. And ability to go ahead and take down. Uh, and the ability to peel the weight off the ground, plus it's very light. But when it's heavy and it's a real work set, it does not go well whatsoever. So uh, that would not be appropriate for most of our clientele. So light tapping up. They have to always be in control of that weight and never relax their positions from start to finish on the floor. Finally, almost just as bad is if they strike out, they don't even miss the ground. So they kind of hit the ground and they have no idea the floating space or when to turn around and reverse the pressure. So if you think of the physics of this, so they're slowing down, taking the weight down, so you have Gravity pulling the weight down, plus the weight, and then have to slow that down, turn it around on their own without hitting anything. That have a nice touch and go sort of fashion. So it's like if a swimmer is going to hit a wall and push off the wall, they better turn around and rebound versus if they were to swim to the wall and miss. I feel like you struck out there. So let's try that. Pick the bit of the bar up, stand up all the way, go up, and then come down, miss the ground, and right back. Good. Now miss the ground. There and up. Good. Again. Right there and up. So. It's very light, and so it's not really showing the point there. But that was a, go ahead and down. That was a heavy load that would really shift the center gravity forward, and he would have a hard time driving up correctly through his heels, extending through the hips, and finishing off. So, uh, big difference on those three different positions, and the difference in keeping solid form, setting records, but mostly for safety. So, keep it nice and tight, light tap and go. They know where the bottom position is. They can they can tap that ground, have a kinesthetic warning of when they need to fire, drive their feet through the ground, and keep their chest and eyes. Thank you.